What's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Hanok. I'm a system administrator based in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to be learning Ansible. Now, some of you might be asking what, what's Ansible. Uh, Ansible is a configuration management tool, and I'll go into that in a little bit. But uh, just to give you some context on this video, there's a project that I uh, at work that I'm on that potentially might be using Ansible. So I thought it would be a good idea to go over it and understand it, potentially do some hands on work with it as well. And I thought it was a great idea if I could show that to, the, to you guys as well. The plan is uh, I'm just going to go through and uh, I think this will be a series of short videos where, you know, I'll go step by step and I'll go through the learning process, but also at the same time document it. And then that way, I'm hoping it'll be useful. We'll see. With that being said, so I have some resources already prepared. So I have uh, some documentation from uh, Ansible. I also have a video ready from Jeff Gerling, I think is how you say his name. He has a YouTube channel. Um, highly suggest checking his YouTube channel out. Without further ado, let's get into this. A configuration management tool is obviously a tool, but it's, it's really a software that allows you to make changes to several servers at the same time. As a system administrator, you know, you work on a system, you might SSH into it, uh, make changes, or, or let's say you're setting up a server, you put an operating system on it, install a few things on it, uh, change some configuration. Now let's say you have a thousand servers, right? Or a hundred plus servers. That would be very painful to do that manually for every single server, right? And not only would it be uh, painful to do it manually and time consuming, but it also would be uh, prone to errors. Um, each individual server <laughs> could come up with its own problems and you know that's going to take time to troubleshoot and figure out so the answer to that is configuration management tool now ansible is not the only one and there's also puppet so puppet is what i'm familiar with and there's also chef and a few others i believe now as far as i know what makes ansible different from puppet is that in puppet you need an agent running on the clients so usually you have a setup where you know, you have your puppet master server and then uh, all the all the servers that you want to configure will have an agent running on them, meaning you install puppet on them at some point or at the beginning when you set them up and then they pull the configurations that you set up from the main uh, puppet server. With Ansible, you don't need any agents running on the servers that you want to configure. You need an Ansible installed on one server and then it'll use the SSH to run whatever you need. And so we'll go in depth on what Ansible is and maybe I'll be corrected on some of the stuff that I already have a conception about. But as I understand it, it's, it's almost like just running a bash script remotely. But for now, I'm just gonna do a little bit of reading and watching videos and then I'll, maybe I'll summarize. Okay, we did some basic reading and I have some notes on how to install Ansible as well as um, run my first command. And I think that's gonna be enough for this video uh, or this session. So there's some basic concepts in Ansible, it seems like. Um, this include control node, manage nodes, inventory, collections, module tasks and playbooks control node is pretty much um, where you install ansible and that's where the tasks and commands uh, whatever you're doing with ansible uh, that's the main server it runs from and manage nodes is the systems that you are trying to manage with ansible right these manage nodes will be in the in a thing called an uh, inventory so and this is just a file it looks like and it can also be just ips and that file it looks like you can group things so i assume you can you can section them out to be you know different um 
different groups. So like web servers, SQL servers, um, or database servers. There's a thing called collections. In the document, it said uh, distribution format for Ansible content, like playbooks, roles, modules, and plugins. Unclear to me what that meant. There's also things called modules. It said it's a unit of code Ansible runs. And so modules seem to be like the actual thing that you um, you configure slash run but pretty much like a service is a module like ping is a module command is a module um, and these these can be used in a on the command line or in a an ansible playbook that'll be more clear as we go further down the line uh, and then there's tasks which are just actions in ansible and these can be this can be uh, just run once uh, on the command line but it could also be in a playbook which is the other concept, playbooks. Uh, and in a playbook, there's gonna be variables and things like that. So uh, playbooks are written in YAML, uh, which is supposed to be uh, easier to understand. Uh, another one, another concept that was mentioned was roles. I didn't quite get what roles do. So roles seems like a, a way to structure an existing collection of um, variables and tasks and um, handlers and Ansible. I think that'll also become more clear as we go. But yeah, so without further ado, I just wanna, I'm gonna install um, Ansible. I know they said you can't use it on Windows, but I'm assuming you can use it on uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. So I have an Ubuntu uh, app that I installed using WSL. Uh, I'm hoping I could just install Ansible there and manage a VM, an Ubuntu VM um, that I have running on my desktop. And if you're curious about uh, any of those, I have a video where I went through a WSL and installing the Ubuntu. Uh, I'll link those videos somewhere up here. So we're just gonna wait for that to come up. And then in the meantime, we're gonna see if we install uh, Ansible on here. So I'm gonna just do sudo apt update. Yeah. Okay. Great. So go out install. Common. Uh, a dash. Cool. I do sudo add repository dash dash yes dash dash update PPA Ansible Ansible sounds about right and finally we're gonna do sudo apt install Ansible, yes. Cool. Looks like oh, it's setting up Python 3. I don't know if it's installed in Python 3. Uh, so I should have Ansible dash dash version. Nice, so I got version 2.96 which is probably the latest one. Um, cool, so I have that installed. I'm gonna check on my virtual machine. Did I not? Oh, there it is. gonna grab the IP address on that one. Copy. Just gonna make sure I can SSH into it. I had to do some funky thing to be able to SSH into that. Um, but Cool. Looks like I can ask something like that. I'm just gonna get out of it because I don't need it. I'm gonna 
minimize it. We're going to install this thing called Python arg complete, which Python three. Oh, it's already installed. Okay. So that I think lets you um, auto complete uh, Ansible commands, just like you would in a, in a regular shell command line. Um, cool. So we're going to do Ansible dash dash version once more to see where the configuration file is. Looks like it's at Etsy Ansible dash CFG. Really. That was so weird. All right, and sudo. I'm gonna save that. And then I'm going to do nano. Okay. Just gonna, I'm just gonna put in the IP, I think. Keep forgetting. Gotta do sudo. Okay. Now, let's see what happens if we run the ping command. Uh, well, first we do ansible all dash dash list hosts. Oh, look at that. So it recognizes, or it has the IP for my Ubuntu VM, and if we do Ansible all dash and ping. Oh, I wonder. Reachable true. Failed to connect to the host via SSH. Do I need to? Pretty sure I can SSH in. Oh, do I need a passwordless SSH? I must, right? And then answer the law dash and ping. Oops. Ansible all dash and ping. Nice. So we got a success message. I'm not quite sure yet exactly what this means. Changed, I assume it's like some kind of state. Nothing has changed, it's just a ping, a ping command. I assume if it was like a configuration change or a file change, I'd say true. And then uh, when we send a ping, we get a pong back, like a uh, ping pong. Okay. I wanna see other commands I can run. You can SCP files. Oh, let's, let's test that. So I'm just gonna touch file to move. And then on that file, I'm just gonna say, hey, this file is going to be moved with Ansible. Okay, you can just cat the file to see. Uh, and then we're gonna put that our home directory here. There's nothing in this um, in this VM. So it looks like we all dash M Ansible. Go from dot copy dash A source equals um, I hope we can do a tilde file to move and then dest equals tilde again and then I'll do a dot there okay so hopefully this should move the file that I just created to the VM okay stuff changed I'm just gonna go here and do an ls ho ho look file is moved if we do a cat 
Oops, I cannot type for my life. Hey, this file is going to be moved. Wow, there you go. Okay, that was some cool stuff. Excited to delve into this more, but I think I'm going to end the video here for this session. Uh, stay tuned um, for more. I'm just going to, I think, document when I um, when I just sit down and and do more work with Ansible, and it'll be part of this playlist of Ansible learning or whatever. We'll see. We'll see what I name it after. But yeah, so for now, just like the video, subscribe so you don't miss um, the next sessions of these um, or any other content that I put out. Uh, until next time, peace.